Welcome citizens and officials and guests to the Town of Brookfield special uh, town meeting. It's hereby called to order. Greetings in the name of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. You are hereby directed to notify and warn the inhabitants of said town, qualified to vote in elections and in town affairs, to meet at the Tintasqua Regional High School, 319 Brookfield Road, Sturbridge, Mass, on Thursday, the 15th day of October in the year 2020 at 6.30 p.m., then and there to act on the following articles. This has been posted by, signed by the uh, Clarence Snyder, Chairman of the Board of Selectmen, Beth Coughlin, Linda Lincoln, and it was posted by Richard Lapierre uh, on October 1st at the post office in the town hall. We agree we have a quorum. Yeah. We have a quorum, Mike? Yep. Okay. Um, please stand and we will do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, a quick, uh, some quick notices. Uh, if you have a cell phone or electronic device, please mute it or shut it off. The school has requested no food in the auditorium, so water is fine. Only registered voters should be in the main sections. Any non-registered voters should be all seated in the upper left-hand corner in the balcony. Uh, all speakers must approach and use the microphone. When you speak for the very first time, please put your, uh, present with your name and your address. After that, um, uh, there's no need to do that. If you can, please do not touch the microphone as little as possible. There are wipes when you're done speaking. You're gonna wipe that down and there are wipes and disinfectant. Uh, does every voter have a yellow card? Please hold them up just to be sure everybody. Okay, thank you. Uh, there are time limits for speakers. Um, the original presenter of uh, an article will be afforded five minutes to present the motion. Uh, more time may be allotted if required to explain a lengthy motion. Speakers on articles uh, will be afforded two minutes time allotted. And we do have a timekeeper. Um, and a warning will be given when you have 30 seconds left, and then when your time is up, we'll be asked to step away from the microphone. If you want to talk again, you go to the end of the line until everybody else has spoken. 
Uh, move the question. If the motion is made to move the question, a vote, a vote will be taken. It requires a two-thirds vote. Um, we do ask that you wear masks all the time. Um, if you have trouble speaking or being able to be understood, you may be able to re remove your mask when you're at the microphone. But we ask that you wear your mask all the other time. Maintain good social distancing. There is um, a bathroom out to my left. It's all the way down the end of the corridor. So if you're in the balcony, you're going to have to come down and go down this hall to the bathroom. Uh, before we get started on the warrant, the Board of Selectmen wanted to make a statement. Mr. Moderator, before we uh, do that, I'd like to offer a motion that non-residents of Jeff Blake, Town Council, Lori Burkus, our accountant, Sarah Hunter, our treasurer, and Karen Trainer, our administrative assistant, be allowed to speak. Motion has been made. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, please signify your raising your card. And opposed, motion passes. Thank you. And a brief statement. And a brief statement, okay. Thank you for support this special town meeting. When the town met Can last... Uh, hold it closer. Is, is this better? Yes. Yep. Okay, so when the town met last at the annual town meeting, we were faced many challenges and enormous uncertainty. The COVID crisis was in full swing. The Department of Revenue had recommended a budget based on 20% reduction in local aid. The town budgeted for increases in insurance plus past financial mistakes. In addition, our financial audit, audit was just underway, the first in six years. With this backdrop, it was the goal of the Board of Selectmen and the Advisory Committee to maintain a stable tax rate and retain all Brookfield employees, causing no layoffs or furloughs at, or as other towns were facing. Through the cooperation of the town employees, committees, we accomplished those goals. It was not easy, not perfect. The Board of Selectmen scheduled an October 15th special town meeting with the anticipation that we would have a clearer understanding of the town's financial standing with better information from M the Mass uh, Department of Revenue and then to meet with other and to meet with other, other adjustments. In hindsight, we probably should have set this meeting a little bit later this month or in early November. As of only much of what we've learned tonight or have have learned has only come to us in the last week and as late as this morning school funding was updated earlier today and fortunately favorable to the town what we know now is local aid is restored to the fy20 levels so more so more than we budgeted for our insurance negotiations yielded favorable premium for the town and the budget reductions we chose to take in june placed us in a position for stability today one major regret of this special, special town meeting is that we ran out of time to address the shortcomings in employee compensation. The advisory, Board of and Advisory and Personnel Committee are committed to work with the department heads over the next eight months and then and be ready for the annual town meeting in June to adjust wages based on a study completed by the Collins, Collins Center and reality of the local labor market to bring in town employees into proper wage alignment. We have, um, you will note that the Board of Selectmen recommends revising the FY21 budget uh, and proposes a 2% COLA uh, retroactive to July 1st, as seen in Article 16. Other articles provide necessary funding for the town's priorities, but we have deferred most capital items which would require borrowing until the annual town meeting, which will, which will, for which we will need the results from the current audit and, and another, another audit in the spring to better position the town to borrow for capital items. The Capital Improvement Planning Committee has done an excellent job. And with the advisory, we look forward to implementing their plan. At the annual town meeting last year, we, were, we, were, we had battened down the hatches and prepared for a rough financial news from DOR and the possibility from the tax base. What we now know, what we now know is that much of this has not materialized, and for this we are grateful. 
but along with advisory, we still see major uncertainty, the COVID pandemic, future state aid, and what we learn from future audits. We will continue to make necessary steps to improve the town's financial position, repaying monies to stabilization as promised in FY20 annual town meeting June 2019, and to stabilize the tax rate this year and next. Again, we thank you for your support and understanding. Thank you, Pam. The advisory also wanted to speak. Yes. Go ahead, Steve. Hello. It works. Nice. Uh, hello, my name is Steve Gillis. I'm the chair of the advisory committee, and to my left and behind me are the, the rest of the committee. Uh, we wanted to update our citizens to the work being done by our financial team to stabilize and secure Brookfield's uh, financial position. The FY19 audit started in July, and it's almost near completion. We are expecting audit results by the end of October. The town expects to receive an audit management letter in early November, which will outline their findings and directives to our financial team. For example, yearly audits, we can expect that. Town accountant will be closing our fiscal year 20 on time by the end of October, and we expect to close out to close out FY20 uh, in the computer system and submit the FY20 balance sheet in October. And the FY balance sheet is that which generates free cash. We will submit FY20 Schedule A, and that's what generates the state aid. We'll submit the Schedule A by November 30th. And one note is that this is the first year in many, many years that the balance sheet, Schedule A, and other things will be submitted on time to the Department of Revenue. So things are moving correctly. FY audit has been scheduled for uh, FY20. The audit has been scheduled and the auditor, uh, with the auditor to start in early spring. Uh, this will be uh, put the town in, uh, on a yearly audit cycle. The reconciliation of all trust funds and all employee withholding accounts and, re and, and removed all prior year variances. So this is a lot of good work. Also, we have new policies and procedures have been implemented in the, in the town. The Board of Selectmen have voted to approve them on September 9th. Uh, th uh, these provide much needed financial oversight and transparency. And they will be published on the town website shortly. Our new treasurer working with town account has balanced cash through at the end of 2000, FY20 that is. Uh, the treasurer's FY21 cash book is being maintained. Work is being done on reconciling some of the tax title accounts and moving that process along. The treasurer is up to date with turnovers, Harper's payroll rates, mass teacher and department unemployment, restructuring bank accounts for better rates, trust funds reconciled, and will be closed out of all bank old bank accounts. So a lot of excellent work there. So as we can see, uh, we continue to improve our, our, our operations and teamwork. Um, still, the advisory believe that we are not out of this yet. As Clarence just stated, we'll state again, COVID uncertainty uh, is, is still with us and it will continue to derive our decisions. And in this light, we will continue to uh, be conservative in our budgeting for FY22. And we, and we hope to continue and strengthen the stability of Brookfield's financial position for the future. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Okay, moving on to the articles. Article number one, to see if the town, to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer or borrow a sum of money to pay an invoice for FY20 or take any other action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator. Yes, Mr. Snyder. I move that the town raise an appropriate $419.06 to pay a global Matello invoice for FY20. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? This is a late the, heating bill. I'm sorry? This is a late heating bill. A late heating bill. Uh, this requires a nine tenths vote. All those in favor, please signify raising your card. And opposed? I see no opposed. It's unanimous. Article number two. 
to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer or borrow a sum of money to pay an invoice by FY20 or take any other action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator. Yes, Mr. Snyder. I move that the town raise appropriate $302.40 to pay a Stonebridge Press invoice for FY20. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? This is a late bill which was sent to the wrong department. Also needs nine tenths. All those in favor, please signify raising your card. And opposed? I see no opposed. That's un unanimous. Article number three. To see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer or borrow a sum of money to pay an invoice for FY20 or take any other action thereto. Mr. Moderator. Yes, Mr. Snyder. I move that the town raise an appropriate $360.36 to pay the Commonwealth of Massachusetts an invoice for FY20. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? This was a meals tax, overdue meals tax payment. Uh, this also requires nine tenths. All those in favor, please signify raising your card. And opposed? I see no opposed. It's unanimous. Thank you. Article number four. To see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer or borrow a sum of money to pay a prior year bill or take any action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator. Mr. Snyder. I move that the town raise an appropriate $300 to pay the town of Sutton an invoice for nursing services for FY20. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Also requires nine tenths. All those in favor, please signify raising your card. And opposed? There are no opposed, that's unanimous. Thank you. Article 5. To see if the town will vote to change the name of the fleet repair replacement vehicle account to the fleet repair replacement vehicle or equipment account or take any action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to change the name of the fleet repair replacement vehicle account to the fleet repair replacement vehicle and equipment account. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify raising your card. And opposed? It's unanimous, thank you. Article number six. I'm not gonna read this whole article, but I'll summarize it. To see if the town will vote, to, uh, vote pursuant to the provisions of Mass General Laws, chapter 59, section 38H, or any other enabling authority to authorize the board of selectmen on behalf of the town. Mr. Moderator. Yes, uh, Ms. Lincoln. No, uh, Ms. Goffin. I move that the town vote to approve Article 6 as written in the warrant. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Can somebody answer that one? Al Jones, Principal Assessor. This is Ad to address Al, please. What's that? Your address. Oh, yep. 48 Allen Road. Thank you. Um, this is to create a pilot payment in lieu of taxes for the uh, proposed solar off of behind, up behind Long Hill and um, Town Farm Roads. Uh, the, if, when it gets created, the amount of power that is generated, if we enter into a pilot, we can, uh, we will get some revenue from it. This is a standard that's been done two other times in the last few years. It's a very standard agreement that just allows the Board of Assessors and primarily the Board of Selectmen to, uh, to go into, enter into a discussion and, discussion and ultimately enter into an agreement for the uh, townspeople on behalf of the townspeople. Is that it? Thank you, Bob. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by raising your card. And opposed? It's unanimous, thank you. Article seven, to see if the town will vote to create a position of foreman for the highway department, or take any ac action relative there to. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to create the position of foreman for the highway department. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Mr. O'Connor. Name and address, please. Peter O'Connell, 7 Hayden Avenue. 
Um, I noticed that there's no money uh, attached to this article. Will the foreman be eligible for uh, a change in salary? It would not be at this time. It, again, this is a structural change, and we would look to the annual town meeting as we look to the Collins report and others to structure what the pay would be based on that assignment. You know, sir. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by raising your vote. And opposed? One opposed. Article 8, to see if the town will vote to raise appropriate transfer or borrow a sum of money to the to the fire station repair account or take any action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town raise an appropriate $4,000 to fund the fire station repair account. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by raising your card. And opposed? Unanimous, thank you. Article 9. To see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer or borrow a sum of money to the town for the town's match in the Department of Energy grant for a solar carport design at the police station. Mr. Moderator? Yes, Ms. Lincoln. I move that the town raise an appropriate $1,500 to the fund, the town's match of a Department of Energy grant for a solar carport at the police station. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by raising your card. And opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Article 10, to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer or borrow a sum of money to purchase a generator for 4 Central Street, or take any action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator? Yes. I would move that the town raise an appropriate $33,000 to purchase a generator for Central Street, Fire Department. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Question. Question. Please approach the mic, please. Please approach the mic so we can hear you. Mm -hmm. Na name and address, please. Gary Giller, it's 18 Allen Road in Brookfield. My question is this, what kind of a generator are you getting that costs 33 grand? What kind of a generator are you getting that costs 33,000? It, there we go, Gary. It's, it's an emergency generator for, for the fire station or for the emergency complex. Okay, what so what happened? Like, we had, this would be like a dual full, uh, fuel generator? Oh, yeah. a, a big one. Yeah, like <laughs> and and if Peter, I saw the fire chief somewhere. Peter, do you want to provide additional information? Where is Peter? I don't, I don't see him here. Yep, I found Peter. Oh, there he is. So you, so you would be guaranteed power even if no one can get to them? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, that's your expense, but you could get a gasoline, even a propane gasoline, 5000 maybe? Peter, do you want to address that? Um, it'd be natural grass spread. We got natural gas on the right place. Peter, name, name and address for us. Oh, I have a question. Peter Martell, Moss Hill Road. It would be natural gas fed, you running the line off Central Street, and it would run the entire compound of 4 Central Street, the fire station, the ambulance garage, the large building out back, and it would be automated um, with a test cycle, so power goes out a few seconds, we're back up. Uh, natural gas. Yeah, street gas. Out of it. Uh, we've got enough usage on Central Street, we're thinking, and actually that same line runs the heat for one of the buildings, so the sub heat on it should be pretty good. Yeah, yeah no, fair enough. Yeah. Well, and, and just to add, while Peter finds his chair, the, the, uh, uh, the grant writer has in fact found a grant application. Or that's, my, that's my understanding, is the grant writer's got something in through him, I believe. Um, Possibly favorable. I yep. mean, it's worth noting that 
know, we pass this today, I'm not ordering it tomorrow, we're gonna see what that grant lands, but that grant is only, it's what's, yeah. so it's 75%, so we'd have yeah. to come up with 25. So even if we get the grant, we still need some seed money. Yes, thanks, thank you. Thank you, Peter. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify your raising your vote. And opposed? Motion passes, thank you. Article 11, to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer or borrow a sum of money to cover the portion of the expense of providing an alum treatment to South Pond or take any action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator. Yes, Ms. Lincoln. I move that the town raise an appropriate $25,000 to fund a portion of the expense of providing an alum treatment to South Pond. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by raising your card. And opposed? It's unanimous, thank you. Article 12, to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer or borrow a sum of money to cover the deficit of the fund of uh, 250 OSRP grant account. Mr. Moderator. Yes, Ms. Lincoln. I move that the town transfer $2,000 from the master plan account to fund the deficit in fund 250 OSRP grant account. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by raising your card. And opposed? Motion passes unanimous. Article 13, to see if the town will vote to adopt and accept a provision of section 20 of chapter 32B of the Massachusetts General Law as amended by section 15 of chapter 218 of acts of 2016 establishing an other post-employment benefits liability trust fund authorized to the Board of Selectmen and the Treasurer to execute the declaration of the trust creating an expended trust. Uh, Mr. Moderator. Yes, uh, Mr. Snyder. I move that the town adopt and accept the provisions of Massachusetts General Law, Chapters 32B, Section 2, and otherwise approve this article as written in, in Article 13 of the Special Town Meeting Warrant. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? This sets up a retirement account, which we, we would be looking at the annual town meeting to fund. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by raising your card. And opposed? Motion passes. Article 14, to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer or borrow a sum of money to fund a position of town administrator for fiscal year 2021 or take any other relative action thereto. Mr. Moderator. Mr. O'Connell. I move that the town vote to add a town administrator line to the selectman's fiscal year 2021 annual operating budget and to raise and appropriate the sum of $37,500 to fund that line in the fiscal year, uh, fiscal 2021 operating budget. Is there a second? Second. We have a second. Discussion? Yes? Do I have a chance to make a case first? I'm sorry. Do I have a chance to make a case? Go right ahead. If you wouldn't mind. A handout was provided as you came in to register, uh, so uh, it's, a, it's a blue handout that explains um, why we're proposing a, a group of citizens petition to, for the support of this article. So if you vote for this article, you enable the selectmen to hire a full-time experienced small town administrator about halfway through the year, in early January. This town administrator would supervise and coordinate the work of the selectman's office and make a proposal for staffing that office in fiscal year 22 
that ensures employment of existing staff, either in the selectman's office or in another department to replace retiring staff. We should not use loyal and hardworking staff. The town administrator would work with the financial team to implement the recommendations of the auditors, work with department heads to coordinate the development of the fiscal year 22 budget, and work with the treasurer to collect a portion of the $1.16 million in back taxes owed to the treasurer and the town. The town administrator would serve as the chief personnel officer of the town and implement the wage and salary recommendations made by the Collins Center two years ago. I want to say that the town can afford and now, right now, and could have afforded two years ago to implement a fair wage and salary program. And if we had had a town administrator, we would have by now. Because we have not done this, we have caused employees to lose trust in us as voters and our selectmen as well. We can and should fund both the town administrator and a fair wage and salary program. We don't have to choose. We can afford both right now. <laughs> the town administrator would improve communication with department heads and the general public, and it would pro provide staff support for the master and capital planning committees, the recreation and open space committee, and the town hall improvement committee, and coordinate work with the grant writer. You may have questions about what a town administrator, how it's different from our administrative assistant. A town administrator has much more professional training in <clears throat> finance and budget, personnel management, project management, and has more authority than an administrative assistant to act on behalf of the selectmen. The town administrator is at the same level as department heads and therefore does not supervise them. They coordinate with them, they communicate, they support the work of volunteer committees, plans, they plan, propose, and implement projects. In making this proposal, we are not blaming anyone for the difficult situation we've been in in the past several years. Indeed, I want to personally thank the selectmen, this group of selectmen, and previous selectmen for all their hard work. Many of us served on a Excuse me. Many of us served on a town administrator study committee nearly 10 years ago that unanimously recommended the hiring of a town administrator, but several boards of selectmen took no action. Since then, things have only gotten much more difficult, uh, demonstrating that a volunteer board of selectmen, no matter how hard they work, simply cannot keep keep up with the de demands we place on them to manage a $9 million organization operating budget. They need to delegate work to a trained town administrator. Can we afford to pay a town administrator? Yes, uh, what we haven't heard here is that we have an unexpected amount of revenue this year, uh, enough to fund this whole warrant and a town administrator and still put money back in stabilization as planned and still stay about $400,000 under our levy limit. Uh, so we can uh, afford it and it should be a no-brainer. We don't ask whether we can afford to pay to run our schools with the superintendent and principals. It's a given. If we think back a few years ago when the, our uh, elected assessors uh, recommended that they become a policy board and they designated the day-to-day -day work, delegated the day-to-day -day work of, of, of doing the assessing to Principal Assessor Al Jones, we see the tremendous progress that was made. 30, 30 seconds. Thank you. Uh, so over the past 10 years, we have wasted money or failed to collect revenues but would have paid a town administrator, given fair wages to town employees, and funded improvements to town roads, buildings, and equipment. If we fail to take this important step now, 
to pass and fund uh, funding for town administrator, we will regret it uh, later. I urge you to pass this article. Thank you. Discussion? Ms. Lincoln. Um, my name is Linda Lincoln, and I'm a member of the Brookfield Board of Selectmen, and I would like to address some of the items on the handout that was distributed prior to the meeting. And these, I would like you all to please note that this is my personal opinion. It seems to me that voting to fund a town administrator is premature and unnecessary at this time. First of all, many of the issues listed as reasons for hiring a town administrator are all being addressed or have been resolved. And if funding is approved, the money would be taken from the $120,000 selectman promised taxpayers would be paid back into stabilization. This is the last article on the warrant. And hiring a town administrator who answers to the board of selectmen, in my opinion, is a waste of money. If you need someone with complete authority over personnel, you need a town manager. And to fund a town administrator for half a year does not make any sense. First of all, the town needs an experienced candidate, and odds are that no one will leave another job for, six months, for a six-month stint with no guarantee of the salary being funded beyond the frame, time frame. I believe the town can accomplish the same goal of a town administrator utilizing current staff, the board of selectmen, as well as board members and volunteers. Before we rush out to spend taxpayers' money, I propose we put together a firm plan, hold regular department head meetings to improve communication, and to commit to achieving the necessary goals. With the current administrative assistant who works full time, our financial team, the grant writer, and active committees such as the CIPC, I believe we can eliminate the need to spend taxpayers' money on a town administrator at this time. Regarding the town's financial issue, the town accountant and the town treasurer have been working diligently and have solved many of the town's past issues and are laying the groundwork for a successful financial future. In fact, the current accountant contract allows her to serve as a financial director at no additional cost to the taxpayers. The town treasurer has been doing HR duties also at no additional cost. And there is an article on tonight's warrant to fund the excess HR responsibilities. And also, 30 seconds, not, and also do not underestimate the duties of the committed board of selectmen. As for the reference to the part of the board of selectmen, when I was chair, I was at the town hall nearly four days a week and also working behind the scenes on a daily basis to manage many matters, including securing both the accountant and the treasurer's firm. I know that my colleagues are equally dedicated. In closing, I would like to thank the, I ask that the town taxpayers do not rush to fund Article 14. We're in the middle of a pandemic. We do not know what the future will bring, financially or otherwise. And now is not the time to make such drastic changes. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Linda. I'm Mary Lou Knight, 20 Lane 21. Uh, my question is, if not now, when? We have had two study committees, one in 2002. At that point, they said, not right now, but when the town government becomes more complex, when management becomes more difficult, yes, we will need a town administrator. I was on the study committee in 2012. At that time, we interviewed current selectmen, past selectmen, employees, other town administrators, other town selectmen. The consensus was, yes, we need to hire a town administrator now. That was eight years ago. If not now, when? I would like to see someone on board to help with next year's budget process, to help with the communication among employees, to help us implement the Collins Center. We submitted that report two years ago. It has not yet been implemented. Just if not now, when? Thank you. Tony? Takes a second, there we go. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, Anthony Aubin, High Street, Brookfield. Uh, I just want to address a couple of things that have been said that I think are um, 
that maybe everyone should have a little clarification on before they take it for, uh, you know, for what it is. Um, first of all, I, I'm in total agreement with Ms. Lincoln about some of these things that are on here. These are things we're fixing now. If not when, well, when you break a leg, you wait till it's completely healed before you start running a marathon. That's the answer to that question. I just think that uh, it's, you know, one thing you have to consider, Mr. Snyder mentioned at the beginning of the meeting that we're gonna enact the Collins Center upgrades next year. That's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. Add 75,000 to that and think about how much we've been struggling to make sure that our budgets have been met. Now I understand that our finances have been bad. You know, on here it says we have 75 hours of business discussion and decision making. I also want to remind everybody that our selectmen work hard all week, not just on their meetings, as do the members of this advisory board also work toward your business on a constant basis, as does this lovely woman to my left over here who puts in tons of work for this town. It's not just 75 hours a week. It's a lot of money. The Collins Center is going to cost us huge. Add 75 grand to that. Sure, our taxes look great right now. You know how hard we've worked for that? And then we're going to bump them up. We're, we're not saying we're going to, but possibly could with all this extra money. Um, I just think that to, to just go ahead and fund it now, I don't think it makes a ton of sense uh, for financial reasons. I think we need to make sure that we're done with our audits, that we have all our finances in order. I mean, Peter's on the Capital Improvement Committee. You know, he should know how much money we have coming up with things that need to be fixed. To so just say that we have money to, that easily can do this, we have money because we squeezed every department in this town. 30 seconds. Thank you. We squeezed every department in this town to give us money back in case we got, didn't get money from the state because of this COVID. And to be in the middle of a pandemic and make a decision like this, I think is foolish on our part. And I think that the money that we ended up getting from the state that wasn't used for the departments needs to be used for the things that we are earmarking it for, including, as Ms. Lincoln said, the money that was promised two years ago to be a return to stabilization that we can finally do now. We've got to get our town in order and get the stabilization rebuilt so we can build a bond rating and start getting loans. I just think that it's not a great decision and I encourage everyone to vote no. Thank you. Okay, uh, Bill and then you. Bill. Bill Simpson, 30 North Brookfield Road. Um, I just like to speak in favor of this article. Um, I get it, it's a, there's no good time for this. No, and it costs money. Um, that's the nature of the beast here. But we have a huge organization that we're running by the skin of our teeth and um, by the dedicated efforts of our select board. All three of you work your tails off, I know this. Um, and the advisory board, you guys, are, I don't even want to guess how many hours you spent in meetings in the last couple of weeks getting ready for this meeting. It's a tremendous amount of work and we're doing it on volunteers' energy and free time. Um, I think to properly manage an organization the size that we are collectively organizing, we need someone who's there every day who can oversee all the different parts and pieces that are moving, who can look to the future to help us gather the grants, work with Kathy and work with all the other groups. We're doing a great job now. I mean, some of the grants that we've gotten have been amazing, but that's because some of the, we've had the initiative from the select board to bring in the grant writer and manage that process. Um, you know, I wish, you know, I wish it didn't cost anything, but it does cost some investment on our part, but I think we will reap the benefits over time um, in terms of quality management, planning, and structural organization. Um, I think I think it's worth it. I, you know, it's not an easy decision, and I think it's a, you know, it's an investment that we have to make. But I think it's an important investment in our future and moving professionally. This organization that we all manage, we want to move it forward professionally. I think this is the best step forward in that direction. So I urge you to vote in favor of the article. Thank you. Thank you. Mike Zeri, West Bay Street. Um, just want to echo what Linda Lincoln said and Tony regarding some of these things. Lifelong citizen of the town of Brookfield. I don't support this article. Um, I just want to let you know of a few things that we're facing in the future because of this pandemic. Um, as far as funding this, state aid is again in jeopardy this year. It wasn't a situation this year, but the state is forecasting uh, 
billions of dollars shortfall projected for fiscal year 22. So it's really trying to fund this right now is a real serious matter. The other thing to consider is three jobs. If we go forward and hire this uh, proposed town administrator, we're gonna lose our administrative assistant, we're gonna lose the assistant to that administrative assistant to the selectmen and our grant writer. That's gonna happen. We can't support all three of those positions and the town administrator. So we need to be concerned about that. Our uh, administrative assistant right now works very hard, 40 hours a week, 10 hour days, constantly under um, a lot of pressure to get the job done. And she works hard, always uh, prepares well. I think we've got that covered. The other thing is there's been some issues brought forward about how solvent we are as a community. You all know that we've recently hired um, a treasurer and our accountant. They have brought things in order in a short amount of time. We're fiscally solvent. As of right now, the books are reconciled to the best of my knowledge. So we're moving forward in that direction. That's really good. As far as HR problems go, I'm not aware of any HR problems right now that aren't being addressed by the treasurer that we have. And I don't see how a town administrator is going to be able to uh, pitch in and, and do that. 30, and also, 30, remember, 30 okay, seconds. we also have to think about this. Any town administrator that we hire in the near future is going to be delegating from the Board of Selectmen's direction. So they don't have complete control. Complete control is still going to be in the hands of the Board of Selectmen. Just remember that. The town administrator isn't going to have the kind of authority that some of you think they will to manage this town. That's still gonna come from three elected members of the Board of Selectmen. Remember that. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Moderator. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Moderator, may I speak? Hi everyone, my name's Tom Regan. Go, go ahead, Dave. You're, you're next. Oh, sorry. You're my next. Uh, Dave Holcraft, 26 Allen Road, Brookfield. Um, when this started about a year, two years ago, everybody thinks that uh, getting a town administrator was going to keep our town accountant in line. A town administrator is not going to know what the accountant is doing. She's not going to know if they're putting the proper entries, monies, et cetera, et cetera, nor the treasurer. She's not going to know what the treasurer is doing either. And that seems to be the problem of why uh, a, few, a group in town would like to have a town administrator. Um, a town manager has full control. They don't take orders from the selectmen. Selectmen give orders to the administrator of what is to be delegated on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, if we get a town administrator, I also want you all to know that they're gonna probably request a car. Well, most towns give an administrator an automobile, plus benefits, plus lots of vacation. And then once, if you're trying to get an administrator in here on January, I think that's uh, rushing it. And then she's gonna have to get acclimated to the town. We're in a pandemic. We're in a financial crisis of trying to get out of it, which the town accountant and the treasurer are doing a great job. And the selectmen are helping them get through this. And I hate to see this turned upside down when we have a, a town, uh, Karen Trainer helping everybody to keep it together. And now all of a sudden we're gonna turn this all upside down and we're gonna be right back where we started from. And we do not have the money. We do not have the money. And our tax bills continue to, to go up. I don't know if you all checked your tax bills, but they're climbing, they're not going down. We have the highest taxes in the four Brook fields. We have the highest assessment 30 seconds, Dave. In, in the four Brook fields. So I urge you to put this off, give it a couple years and let's see how things go but they are not gonna help, the town administrator is not gonna be overseeing the town accountant to see if she's doing the job properly or not, or the treasurer. Thank you. Thank you. Tom, and then Beth, you were next. Hi everyone, my name's Tom Regan, vice chair of the advisory board, Six Mockingbird Lane. Um, my concern with this position and that I've raised with uh, several people who've uh, discussed this with me is I understand the expected benefit of the position. And yeah, it looks good. It looks really good. 
my question to them is, what examples do we have of a town like, similar to Brookfield, in the recent past, bringing in a town administrator, and how did that work out? My concern is, there are town administrators out there, and maybe they're good town administrators applying structure to an, what would otherwise be a dysfunctional town. Some of them are probably dysfunctional administrators who are in a structure that otherwise works well for them. So, what is it like to bring a town administrator on board? What lessons can we learn? My other concern would be, we're a small town. We're, we're a small town. And so, what kind of person is going to want to administer a small town? A rookie. So I, I don't know, that, would, that could be handled in the hiring process, but that's a concern of mine, and that's something that I think I would like more time to think it through before proving this. And finally, just on a number sense, I understand the if not now when, but I think right now, we, do, we have dodged, financially we have dodged a bullet this year. State aid came through for us, which we did not expect. I would like to see, I would like to be confident it's coming through next year before I make a commitment to funding a town administrator at $75,000 a year when we're already intending to do a major salary treatment in fiscal year 22. 30 seconds. I'm done, thank you. Beth, I think you were next. Uh, so first off, I want to make it very clear that I, I strongly support bringing in a town administrator, and it's not to cast any dispersions on anyone's work up to this point. I, I think the point that has been made, that we're in a better position financially, that our books are reconciled, that things are, are flowing smoother than they have in years in this town. I, I mean, not to be funny, it took us five years to get a bathroom. It may only take us, you know, two years to get get some of the other things we've already voted on in the town. But what doesn't happen, okay, is, is we have initiatives, we have ideas, we have strategies that aren't happening today. We don't have an economic development plan. It's hard for us to go out and find folks to manage the open space plan, folks to manage the, the master plan. In order to actually have a direction that we're going in the town, we're in a good, stable place financially today, okay? The audits are coming in, we're gonna be in a position to do real financial planning, okay? To say that bringing an additional person in to provide that consistent guidance Yes, under the direction of the Board of Selectmen. I'm sorry, anybody that says the town manager isn't under the direction of a Board of Selectmen is incorrect in stating that. They, have, they do have a different level or a different position relative to department heads, but at the end of the day, the Board of Selectmen is still, in essence, the steering committee, whether you have a town manager or a town administrator. So that's a red herring, folks. Really what it comes down to is that the town administrator will provide consistent, available, eyes on, on the day-to-day -day operations in the town so we can take 30 seconds. the foundation that we have today and maintain it instead of going through the cyclical system where, okay, we're good today, but two years down the line, so our volunteers have moved, few people have moved on to other things, they don't have time to, to give it, and we don't have that clear like leadership and process in place to provide the stability to move the town forward consistently uh, into the future instead of just picking up the pieces and, and sweeping out the, the problems from the past. So, Time's up. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we, Tony had his hand up. Yeah. You're next. I, I just wanted to clarify a couple of things. Uh, I believe we were called a nine million dollar town or an eight and a half million dollar town, so I just want to make sure we do that as well. Um, we are a, um, we are a small town. I know that you know the, 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 a lot of verbiage. You know, you, it's we keep being referred to as a nine million dollar business or an eight and a half million dollar town. We are a business, but you know, it's I know it takes a lot of the sting out of it when you call it a business. Uh, and I also just wanted to point out there that, that the. Uh, Board of Selectmen and the Advisory Committee voted to not support this. Thank you. Further discussion?
Herman Eaton, 13 West Main Street, Brookfield. Uh, just to address a couple of questions, and I had a, a question I wanted to ask the advisory board. Okay, closer to the mic. Oh. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, Tom, 88% uh, of the towns, smaller and bigger than ours, in the Commonwealth have town administrators. Uh, they seem to be doing pretty good. And we are a $9 million municipality. And being in business myself, I think the challenges of running a $9 million municipality is probably tougher than running a $9 million business. Because when you run a $9 million business, you can dictate and direct if you want to. But you have to get consensus when you run a municipality. So the challenges, I think, and having experience in both are considerably tougher in a municipality. Uh, so I want to address that issue, and I think a town administrator will bring continuity. We have selectmen, and theoretically every year we can lose a selectman through the election process. And so we have that possibility of a constant turnover. A terminal administrator will bring consistency. The other thing I want to say is I think the uh, contracted treasurer has done an, an extraordinary job in a short period of time. The question I ask is, they are on contract. 30 seconds. What does the contract say? Could they theoretically quit tomorrow? What does the contract say? What is the continuity we have in, in this organization? who have done a good job for us. I'd like somebody to answer that. Thank you. That was to Tom, I believe there was a question. Do you want to answer that, Tom? Whoever. So the, the contract for the treasurer's office is a, a 30 day notice on either side. Gary Lincoln, Claywalk Street, Brookfield. Uh, I just wanted to point out that uh, West Brookfield, it's on the chart here, uh, has an $82,000. Uh, closer to the mic, please. Closer to the mic. Has an $82,000 a year town administrator, and they were in as much financial trouble as we were last year. So this idea that a town administrator is going to fix everything is not right. And uh, secondly, uh, everybody's calling this a, a uh, $9 million business. It's not a business when you're taxing people for the revenue. It's not a business. That's Thank you. Well, I've got two in the balcony, right? Go ahead in the balcony. Okay, Barbara Wilson, 86 Weber Road. Um, I'm very surprised that this is even on here tonight. I mean, I, I cannot understand why we keep doing this. When we want something like this, we always slide it into a special town meeting instead of taking it to an annual one. And tonight, we're doing it on top of the COVID where people have not come out, some of them, because they can't wear the mask or they cannot get in with groups. We have not given the citizens of Brookfield the time to come and really vote on something that I think is essential. I understand that the $75 that we're voting tonight, if we do it, is only for six months. And then again, they, they will be voting on a wage for him or her, whoever has the part. I am very much against what we're doing here tonight. I am with the advisory board and the select board, and I, I cannot understand why we would do it. But knowing it has been done before, and this is the way we slide things through, I am saying don't do it. For once, stand up here, think of the people that we're going to be putting out of jobs in a time of crisis 
When you're lucky if you've got bread on your table or you've got a means of running a business, I think it's time we went hand in hand with each other and we say no to this and if you want to pursue it, bring it up at the annual town meeting Thir like you should. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Richard Chafee, Town Farm Road, Brookfield. Could you get closer to the mic? I couldn't that hear that. Richard Chafee, Town Farm Road. I have two points. I've watched the fire department, the highway department, and a lot of other boards in town keep getting asked to put things off to the next year and next year. Some of the highway department equipment is done on, it, it's really in bad shape. Not all of it, but some of it's in bad shape. So I've seen a lot of people volunteer to do things. We have a great town and everyone comes together when we need it. Instead of a town administrator, why don't we invest in what we have, send Karen for training, give her a little more money, encourage her to stay, and we have something that's working. She's able, she could be trained, it wouldn't cost as much, and we already have the process in place. I don't support this 75,000. It's not 75,000. It's going to be much more health insurance with the benefits. And I don't think that's what Brookfield needs right now. I think we have someone in place, and I think we could make it a little better position, send it for some training. Thank you. Thank you. Mike, and then Trudy. Mike. Microphone. Uh, I'd like to move that we pass over this article. Motion has been made to pass over the article. Is there a second? Pass over. Uh, has has been seconded. Point of order. Kevin Urkula, 130 Long Hill Road. Mr. Moderator, point of order. The motion to pass over an article must be made before the article has been read. Thank you. So the motion to pass over has been made and seconded. I don't believe that's debatable. It is debatable. It is debatable. Okay. Discussion. The people who are standing in line to talk before the I think you have to debate, debate the, the motion on the floor, which is to pass over. But there's a motion on the floor. We have to address that. So a motion has been made and seconded to pass over. All those in favor, please signify a raise in your card. Twenty-two. All those opposed, please raise your card. 22. Well, the motion is defeated. Now, Trudy, you can continue with your... Yes. Trudy O'Connell, Hayden Avenue. In response to a question or an issue that was raised earlier, I believe by Mrs. Wilson, that 
things seem to be snuck into special town meetings. This article was presented for the annual town meeting and at the request of the advisory committee and the board of selectmen, the petitioners agreed to postpone the article to this meeting. So this was in no way a sneaky act. Uh, and I just wanna say that it seems to me that this article, this, this issue has been discussed for many years. Um, one of the reasons why it was postponed was because the financial issues were still so uncertain. They are not uncertain the way they were then. We do have the money. And it seems to me that it's about time that we elevated this town to a little more professional level and freed the hardworking, long-suffering Board of Selectmen from some of the things that they have to do and uh, had someone, as was pointed out earlier, who is a consistent person from Board of Selectmen to Board of Selectmen who can, carries a kind of institutional memory that really benefits the town. So I would urge passage of this article. Thank you. Thank you. I saw a hand down here. Tom Regan. Mr. Moderator, through you, I would just like to also um, follow on to um, Ms. O'Connell's response and say that in the warrant, this is a citizen's petition. The Board of Selectmen, as I understand it, and Town Council, please correct me if I'm wrong, the Board of Selectmen and the Advisory Board, we have no control. If a citizen petition arrives and has signatures, it goes in the warrant because the citizens want it. It is part of our democracy that allows citizens to get things on the warrant even, even if we didn't want them. So that is what, one of the reasons why we're discussing it today. There were enough citizens to put it on, in the book. That's why we're having it today. Thank you. Any further discussion? Motion to move the question. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor, please signify by raising your card. Uh, is this a two thirds? I'm sorry, so I need counters? Uh, hang on one second until the counters get in place. <laughs> My counter's ready. All those in favor of passing the motion, please signify by raising your card. I'm sorry? I'm, I'm sorry, we're voting to end discussion. All those in favor of ending discussion, please signify by raising your card. Counters. And opposed. Those opposed. No opposed. And discussion has ended. Now, all those in favor of passing the motion, please signify. Me. I'm sorry. That's what was read. Okay. All those in favor of passing the motion, please signify by raising your card. Counters? Counters, report. 41, 19, 9. 41, 19, and 9. Opposed.
The motion passes 69 to 27. Thank you. Article number 15, to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer or borrow a sum of money to hire a municipal clerk for the tax collector's office for fiscal year 2021 or take any relative action thereto. Mr. Moderator. Mr. I move that the town raise an appropriate $2,600 to hire a municipal clerk for the tax collector's office for the remainder of fiscal year 21. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? This is this is a recommendation from the, okay. audit, from the audit staff to better position the tax collectors. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please signify by raising your cards. And opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Article 16. Again, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I'll give you the summary. To see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer or borrow a sum of money to fund a 2% COLA uh, raise for non-union town employees. Mr. Moderator. Yes. Go ahead. I move that the town raise an appropriate $25,457.67 for the purposes of this article with such adjustments to various wages and salary budget lines contained in FY21. Annual budget voted under Article 2 of June 26, 2020, annual town meeting is shown in an annotated warrant, warrant and further to reduce the amount voted under Article 2 of June 26, 2020, annual town meeting. Budget line item 199, account number 0019455600-000. Further, the general insurance by by twenty uh, by forty thousand from one hundred and fifty eight thousand nine hundred and thirty dollars to one hundred and eighteen dollars one hundred and eighteen thousand dollars again one hundred and eighteen thousand nine hundred and thirty dollars with the overall total operating budget for FY twenty one being eight million five hundred and seventy two thousand five hundred and twenty seven dollars and sixty seven cents before any additional appropriations made at the, at the October made at this October 15, 2020 special town meeting. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Do we have a copy? Do you have a copy of that, Mike? Yeah. You know, okay. okay. So, so this, so that yes, go ahead. So that we're, we're clear. What this does is this takes, a, it takes advantage of favorable insurance credit, basically, negotiation. Wow. The Oh. What what this article does is that it takes advantage of a negotiated settlement for insurance for the year of premium, of, of, which was favorable to the town for forty thousand dollars. What this article also does is that in January we have to meet minimum minimum wage is going to be increased, and what this allows us to do is to be prepared to pay, to fund the in increase in uh, minimum wage. And this further provides a 2% COLA back retroactive to July 1 for the town employees. Discussion? I'm definitely all for giving employees a raise. What I'm concerned about is the two-year delay in implementing the Collins study, which as I understand it was a wage and salary personnel study that looked at comparable positions in other towns and did all the research needed to make recommendations for what people in Brookfield should be paid. We have kicked this can down the road and the people who suffer are the employees. And giving a 2% COLA and saying, well, we'll do this next year, um, to me is, as a, as a voter, as a citizen, as someone who appreciates what town employees do, unacceptable. And I would say, I would like to urge, I don't know if it's appropriate to make a motion, but I would like to urge that if indeed the uh, selectmen and the advisory committee decide to implement the Collins Center for fiscal 22, 
that instead, if that's what their plan is, that instead there be a special town meeting before the annual town meeting where we use free cash to fund the Collins Center report to raise people and adjust the salaries at a special town meeting and make them retroactive to July 1, 2020. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please sit. Yes? I don't think it was a motion. I, th I think. I just need to know when this proposal is. It's not for this meeting, correct? It's not a motion. It, as I understand it, it was a suggestion. Suggestion? Thank you. Square. All in favor of this motion, please seek uh, a motion. Please signify by raising your card. And opposed. Motion passes. Thank you. Article 17. <coughs> Excuse me. Mr. Moderator. Yes. I move that the town. I'm sorry. Oh, go right ahead, Beth. Uh, Article 17, to see if the town will vote, <coughs> excuse me, to raise an appropriate transfer or borrow a sum of money to fund the town hall improvement account to, short, to fund a shortfall in budget or take any other action relative there to. <coughs> Mr. Moderator, yes, move that the town raise an appropriate $2,322 for the funding of the town hall improvement account budget. Motion has been made and seconded. Discussion? Hello, Bill Simpson here, um, Chair of the Town Hall Improvement Committee. Um, I'd just like to speak on this. This was uh, just a, when we were revising the budgets due to the COVID issues and the expected decline in 20% of revenue, uh, the advisory and uh, I think through some discussions, we brought our, the Town Hall Improvement Committee budget went dropped down about 20%, I believe. Uh, this would just raise us up to a 5% decrease year over year. So we're still taking the 5% decrease that was originally requested. Um, this just returns us to that level where we're still less than less, less than last year, but um, not drastically less. So if there's any questions. Thank you. Tom Regan? Yes, Tom Regan, I'd just like to address this, that um, Mr. Mr. Simpson is correct that um, this, is, uh, this is the amount that, was, that we asked them to reduce their budget um, as part of the 5% uh, cut in order to um, better position the town for uh, expected financial turbulence. Uh, I will say that um, from the discussion of the advisory committee, um, we did not support this, and my reason for not supporting it was that we asked all the departments to cut their budgets, and we asked, and my thought is, is that we should continue asking them. I'm not, I don't like the idea of giving some departments back their money, their money without, without a strong reason. And so through you, Mr. Moderator, I asked Mr. Simpson, is there a burn, is there something that has come up that makes this money necessary? Or are you simply saying, hey, things look good, can we get, can we get that cut back? Can you explain to me what the need for this um, reappropriation of the money is? Sure. Um, I, I can't give you an exact dollar amount because the list of tasks that we have that would fit that dollar amount are way above our budget um, uh, between uh, the potential boiler that could go down at, at any various time. We have some motions in that for the Capital Improvement Planning Committee, but we don't know. We have a, a very old boiler in the town hall that we want to have some money for repairs and potential replacement if needed. Um, there's a carpet in the banquet hall, which is ancient, uh, also needs to be replaced. There's window repairs throughout the building. We want to put a commercial dehumidifier in the uh, server room for the town hall, which is, is a very damp room, um, but that costs a couple grand too. I mean, this is sort of the beginning of the list here that there's 
the, the long-term storage and um, organization of the documents in the town hall, which take up a tremendous amount of floor space, um, which costs money and time to really properly dispose of, organize, and store. Um, there's uh, the ADA transition report that was completed a couple of years ago. We're slowly going through and implementing the low-cost items on that is what we've been able to do. So this past year, and courtesy of the 60,000 in grants and money previously allocated, allocated we've redone two of the bathrooms in the town hall. So we're, we're making steady progress throughout the building, um, but there's, there's always more. Um, and there's a, just some emergency masonry repairs, which we, I think we're gonna be able to lump into a grant, but there's the laundry list of town hall improvements is well beyond our scheduled budget, um, but we've been able to work within the budget. And last year we were a little below our budget. Um, so, you know, I'd like to return us to less than we, had budgeted previously, still a 5% re reduction over year over year, but um, I think that would be appropriate to give us the money to keep moving forward, um, but not in any extravagant way. Thank you. Tom, you were next. Um, Mr. Simpson, I'd like to um, rephrase my question. What are you going to do this year with that $2,000 that you would not be able to do without that money? I understand you have a very long list. It's an old building. There's a lot that needs to be done. But what's that money, what's this appropriation going to allow you to do that you would not be able to do without it? Do you want to answer that first? Or oh, go ahead, Mary Lou. I have a clarification for Mr. Reagan. This was yeah, a 20%. Closer to the mic, please. This was a 20% reduction in our budget. We had given a 5% reduction. The Board of Selectmen in Balancing their budget down 5% reduced our budget an additional 15%. This is just replacing that additional 15%. Thank you. Um, so Tom, I, I don't have like a, this is a $2,000 item list. I, I wish I could say like, this, everything's gonna cost X amount of dollars, but there's a lot of unknowns in the town hall um, with repairs. Um, like I say, we do the best we can with the limited budget that we have, and sometimes, like with the past year, we were holding money because we're still waiting on a platform lift to go in, and we've had issues with contractors. We don't, we're still hoping that, I, long story, but um, there's unknown costs in that project as well. So we have a lot of unknowns as we move forward with these projects. So I can't say there's one item that's $2,000 specifically, but, um, but there's, there's a lot of items. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor of Article 17, please signify by raising your card. And opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Article 18, to see if the town will vote to accept a gift of property from the Brookfield, Massachusetts uh, Boy Scout Troop 159, a duly organized troop of the Boy Scouts of America, or the current owner, which property is located on Boys Ave. Mr. Moderator. Yes, Ms. Carver. What's that? Go right ahead. I move that the town accept a gift of property from Brookfield, Massachusetts, Boy Scout Troop number 159 as written in Article 18 of the Special Town Meeting Warrant. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Mr. Moderator? Yes. Uh, I'm taking my selectman's hat off for a moment and putting my moderator of the Brookfield Congregational Church. Clo closer. Uh, better? Okay. So, all right. So I'm taking my selectman's hat off for a moment and putting my moderator of the Brookfield Congregational Church hat on. We, we sponsor the Boy Scout Troop. The Boy Scout Troop cannot hold property. Further, with all things going on with the Boy Scouts at national level and whatnot, We'd hate to have anybody come to town to suggest that they might be able to take possession of that property. So in co cooperation with the Board of Selectmen and the church, we decided that the best approach to this is to have the town hold just like any other property that the town holds, and that on a, on a yearly basis, the scouts would then, in turn, request the Board of Selectmen for permission to use the property year over year. It, just, it won't change anything, but it protects that property for the Boy Scouts and the town. Thank you. Further discussion? Tom? 
the question I have is, um, what is the town's plan for managing this property? I, I heard Mr. Snyder say that it would be uh, granted to use for the, for the Boy Scout troop, and I think that's a great idea. But there are other groups in town who might want to use the use that property. Um, I specifically think of the Girl Scouts. My wife is one of the Girl Scout leaders in town. So I'm wondering if anyone can answer me that question. So I'll put my selectman's hat back on. The Board of Selectmen will, in, in fact, regulate the use of the property. Again, it would be a permitted uh, use uh, year over year. So certainly the Girl Scouts, if they haven't joined the Boy Scouts, if the Girl Scouts hadn't joined the Boy Scouts already, that they, they would have the opportunity to take advantage of the property. Again, the Finneys donated this property to the town, to the Boy Scouts in 1959. And again, a lot, a lot of things have changed since 1959. We're hopeful that through cooperation by the Boy Scouts and the Board of Selectmen, that we can continue the traditions the Boy Scouts have founded. Thank you. Elk. Tom, this parcel is off Boys Ave. It has no road frontage except on an old dirt paper road, and it backs up to a whole bunch of state land in East Brookfield. All of that land, I would think, is available for anybody to use. Does that answer your question? Through you, Mr. Moderator, my, Al, my thought was that it's more, I know that the Boy Scout troop uses it for camping, and so how would contention of multiple groups want to use it for the same weekend? That's my concern about how has that been thought through. I, I know where it is. I've been meaning to get to it for years, and I just never get to it because other things come up. And I know, but I, and from what I understand, it's nice, it's, it's good for what they use it for, but how is the town going to manage it? Because if the town right now, with the Boy Scouts owning it through the church, it's theirs, and no one else can use it without their permission. When it becomes the town's, now the town will have to provide equal access to it um, on a fair and non-discriminatory basis, or whatever the right term is. And that's what I'm trying to get an understanding of how we've thought this through. I just want more information, but thank you. I know we're- Okay, thank you. Mr. Moderator? Yes, Clarence? What, the, what this does is it put, puts it back in the-, the hold, hold it close up. The, the use of this property, it, puts it in the selectman's hands that there would be a land use permit year over year for the use of it, or it could be if there were other groups that wanted to take advantage of it, to have the selectman understand that so that we could work cooperatively with the youth groups to make sure that we take advantage of the property as the Finneys anticipated in 1959. Further discussion? Mr. Moderator, I, I just wanted to uh, ask Clarence, if that's okay through you. Um, I noticed in there that it says, uh, which may be a, a nominal sum, are we planning on charging the Boy Scouts for using the land that they currently own? I would say certainly not. I just wanted to make sure, thank you. Further discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor of this article, please motion, please signify by raising your card. And opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. That was Article 18. Article 19. To see if the town will vote to, to dedicate the former so called Lakeside Tobin Campground, generally known on, on town of Brookfield as a successor's map, NP1. 5D and is more particularly shown on plan to be distributed at town meeting as a park in perpetuity for the town of Brookfield according to general law chapter 45 section 3 or take any other action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator. Yes, Beth. I move that the town transfer care, custody, and control of the property commonly known as the Lakeside or Tobin Campground as shown on the map distributed at town meeting from the tax title custodian or other custodian to the Board of Selectmen for the purpose of dedicating the property as a public park in perpetuity of the town of Brookfield according to General Law uh, Chapter 45, Section 3 and further to so dedicate the property as a public park. Motion has been made and seconded. Any further? No. Discussion?
Marty Banish, 18 Brunel Ave, Brookfield. Um, I would request that this item be tabled pending more information regarding this uh, transfer of ownership of the property for use as a public park. There is no information regarding what the town's uh, expenditures are going to be to create this, to make this a park. Uh, what's it going to cost for the removal of the existing structures? What are the maintenance fees going to be? Um, are there going to be any facilities that have to be created on this property? Um, another issue is whether or not the property in its entirety has to be preserved as, as a park. Is the intention to provide lake access through that one property that abuts the lake? If not, why can't that property be sold by the town for future taxable income? It wouldn't be nice to see us generate some kind of income off of areas of this property that do not have to be preserved. So pending some kind of information regarding all these issues, I would just recommend that we table this discussion, table this item. Is that a motion? Is there a second? Seeing none. Fine. Is that a second? Yes. A right, motion to table has been made and seconded. So let me ask you for clarification what your intention of the motion is. Lay on the table or to postpone indefinitely until you get further information. There's two different kinds of motions. So the motion is to postpone indefinitely for further information. That's a, that's a uh, that's debatable, and it's also a um, simple majority. We we need to we need to take action on that motion. Discussion, go ahead. My name is Tom Morris, also known as Silver Fox, tribal member of Chibana Gungamak Nipmuc Indians. Yeah. Closer to the mic, please. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to touch the mic, so. I've been working on the Adena project for approximately five or six years now. The land at the Tobin campground has been dedicated as a cemetery. Um, I would be deeply hurt if it was promoted as a park. Um, there are tribal remains there from the Adena people. Uh, it is also di documented, as Clarence knows, there is a, a large book in the, in the uh, town office. Um, again, I would be deeply hurt if it was moved into you know, a public park. Uh, UMass Amherst, Eric Johnson, put a lot of time and work into uh, finding those remains and artifacts. And, and a lot of work was done in repatriating those remains, too. Uh, I brought all the information back to the Tribal Council, and I'm representing them here, too. So I, I hope we can not make that a public park where you know we can we can hold ceremonies and things down there i've been going down there for all 30 these seconds years. Hmm? 30 seconds okay. that's all that's all i've got to say i'd be i'd be hurt if it was made a public park thank you so just just to address so the grant writer came forward with the idea Close, of closer i'll get it right by the end of the night so, so the grant writer came forward with 
this idea of identifying it as a park for the purposes of being able to obtain money so that we could in fact make improvements, finish tearing down the buildings and the like. So again, there was no malicious intent in providing it as a park. It was more Kathy's idea of how to secure additional funds to continue the cleanup. And so again, there's a report in town hall, please take advantage of it because we have years of research now as to what, what is in fact at the Tobin campground and in the whole area. I mean, let's not kid ourselves. The town owns a place called Tobin Campground. The area around that whole area is a sacred place. It is a burial ground. Others have found uh, remnants of burials beyond the park. So this is a super secret, super sacred place that we need to keep be able to take care of in perpetuity. And again, Tom, Kathy's intent was not to be uh, de denigrated or anything, the, uh, the, the remains that are there. Hell. A quick history, this was at one point cut up into a series of maybe 25 uh, in one corner small tent sites. They were sold off as condominiums the town took them all back by tax title, and as a result, once they all those little dead sites were taken back, the town became owners of the entire parcel. So the town currently does own, uh, council agrees, the town does own this right now. So it's just a matter of clarifying it as a parkland that can't get developed. So there's a motion on the floor to postpone indefinitely. It's a simple majority. Is there further discussion on that, to that point? Mr. Moderator, I, I yep. propose that we table it. We, we don't have to make this decision tonight. Again, it's Kathy's idea, a way to secure funds. We can work on this and, and maybe provide some additional meeting uh, information for the annual town meeting. So there's a motion on the floor to postpone indefinitely, so we need to take that, take that vote. All in favor of postponing indefinitely, please signify by raising your card. And opposed, the motion passes. So that is postponed. Um, Article 20, to see if the town will raise an appropriate sum of money to support the opening of the South Pond Beach for 2021 and at any fees allowed for the fines collected related to the operations of the beach be directed to the South Pond Beach budget line item to offset the operational expense or take any other action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator. Yes, Beth. I move that the town raise and appropriate $1,180 to support the opening of the South Pond Beach for 2021 and that any fees allowed or fines collected related to the operation of the beach be directed to the South Pond Beach budget line item to offset the operational expenses. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Why don't you want us? Yeah, uh, just very quickly, you have a new committee uh, that's related to the South Pond Beach. We hit. Close. <clears throat> anyway, sorry. You have a new committee that has taken responsibility for the South Pond Beach and, and the management for it. Uh, again, it's a property that's owned by wildlife and that the town on a year-to-year -year basis is contracted to have advantage of the beach. Yes, it is used by other folks from other towns and the like. What this is going to do is we've had year-over-year -year issues uh, with the beach where we've had people doing things that they shouldn't be doing. W within the contract with wildlife, should we move forward again for another year, what we, were, we are allowed to do is to collect fees. So again, this is something where we need beach monitors to be able to collect those fees. And so the, the 1180 is to provide signage, provide a couple of people to be able to monitor the beach. Uh, and again, should we have issues as we have had in, the, in this past summer where things kind of get out of control, we can on typically hot weekends around July 4th, that we'll have people there that will be able to monitor and take action to move the police down if they need to. So again, it's a just a little bit more than what we pay for porta potty at the at the site. But again, but again, this allows us to.
to take uh, a little bit more responsibility and give the committee the resources that it needs to see if we can make a, an improvement at the beach. Thank you. Any further discussion? Tim Simon, Rice Corner Road. I'd like to know. I'd like to know more about what the monitors are going to do. What fees they're going to collect that uh, you're thinking about, and how many actual total hours they're going to be monitoring or uh, whatever uh, they're going to be doing uh, during the week during the summer. Basically, Tim, it's to cover weekends. Uh, yeah, to cover weekends. So that it's just a, a little bit of money to see what we can do because that seems to be the, the issue. Hot, hot, hot days on weekends, so again, that a couple of monitors to be able to do that. To also collect fees that are within the contract. And again, I don't have the contract with me tonight, but it's, it's like $5 per, per visit for a single person. Uh, I'm sorry, yes, $5 and, and then it's like $10 uh, per family for, for the use. And it's, the capability to also to do it for a season. And again, I think it was for a family, it was 25 bucks for a season. There may be good reasons to do that, but uh, I'd actually hate to see that because I like the way the beach runs now. Okay. Again, we're trying to balance the safety and, and the issues that have happened at the beach to, to be more proactive as far as cutting things off that, that, that are found there. It's just a way to approach it. Are the issues that bad? The neighbors would say yes. What kind of issues? What, what, what we've had, we've had fires, we've had trash left, uh, monitoring of trash. So it's just an asundry of, of uh, issues that had come. And again, it was early July again this year where we had to have police down. We were successful, in fact, to have the police be able to use from uh, from Sturbridge monitor the beach on, on the water because of jet skis that were coming in into the beach inappropriately. It's just one example. Yeah, I can see some of that because I was involved with the beach uh, some time ago to starting it up. But I, I hate to see the officiousness of um, mo you know monitoring and um, asking people for fees. Uh, what about the other five days during the week? We did not consider it at this time, Jim. Yeah, I just, um, it just doesn't feel quite right to me. It seems like a little bit too much, but I, I can see your point, but I, I must say I'm, I feel uncomfortable with that. Thank Again, you. Again, this is to Thank you. support the committee to see what we can do to change the dynamic for the next summer. Thank you. Any further discussion? Tony? Yeah, wait for a second, that was mic to work. Um, my question uh, through you, Mr. Moderator, to, um, to uh, Mr. Snyder. When the fees are decided for the beach, is this going to be something that the town is going to have a say in, or is this going to be something that's going to be enacted by a committee? Because this has been a beach that's been free to use for a long time. I think we've uh, approved quite a bit of money just for things that, you know, or that are needed or whatever uh, for 1200 bucks. Why we gotta charge in our residents? Maybe we can just charge the non-residents, or I'm just just wondering if it's something that the town and I was saying. So the fee structure is actually set by the wildlife folks. It's part of the contract, and again, we have a choice of whether we apply it or not. So again, we want to make sure that we have monitors there so that we can make sure we catch things before they get out of control. So that was one one part of this of the idea. Again, the committee's going to meet in November. And again, this was to say to them, a message to them, that the, that the town, in fact, is in support of, of having a committee and supportive of the, the good functioning of the beach. Thank you. Any, any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify raising your card. And opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Article 21. Mr. Moderator. Yes. Uh, before we proceed on to the next article, 
Uh, I know this is going nowhere, but I'm going to express it anyway. I would like to reconsider the vote on Article 14. I feel strongly that six months with people, maybe they don't have the degrees, but they've got the knowledge and they brought this town to where it is so far. And from what I've heard from the people of the boards and the people that work with them and so forth, I feel that six months should be put aside and that vote should be taken to the annual town meeting and then the people maybe will be further along with this COVID thing and we will be concentrating more on this vote and the people that would like to get out here tonight to vote that can't. I would like to make a motion to reconsider that vote and take it to the annual town meeting. So motion has been made and seconded to reconsider. Normally, reconsideration is only done if there is added information or if there's some kind of error in the procedure or it's illegal. I would ask the town council, is that a fair assessment of a reconsideration vote motion? All right, after review with uh, town council, uh, that's, a, that's a legal motion. So the motion has been made and seconded. I don't see that it's debatable. Uh, so all those in favor of reconsidering article. You got your hand up just in time. I'm not sure I understand how you can reconsider if the number of voters is different than when we voted. Uh, I know I've seen at least three people who voted for this have subsequently left the meeting. I mean, you could argue that you could do this at the very last and uh, keep all the people who are for or against something to stay and say you're going to call uh, a recount after a, a number of people left. So I, I don't understand how you can take a vote now with the, uh, the population in this room change. Maybe you could answer that. Can you hear it? Yeah, you can. But through you, Mr. Moderator, um, the, the rules provide for motions for reconsideration. You can only reconsider motion. You can only make a motion to reconsider once throughout the town meeting. So I have oftentimes seen in towns that have this situation where there's a hot button issue, a, a vote is taken and there's an immediate motion to reconsider and that is denied and it's set in stone. 
But to your point, yes, you are right. At the very end of the meeting, absent any limitation in your bylaw, and I don't see one, somebody could wait to the end of the meeting to move to reconsider as people are filing out. And that's a bylaw, is that the bylaw? That's a bylaw, you said? I don't see any limitations on your motions to reconsider. Some bylaws will have in them, you can't move to reconsider 10 minutes after the decision. You can't move to reconsider more than three articles from the decision. Your bylaw does not have those kind of limitations in it. Our bylaw, it's our, it's our bylaw. Okay. Thank you. Your town bylaw does not. Okay. So under, um, I believe it's, Section 15 of the bylaws is and when a motion for reconsideration is decided, that decision shall not be reconsidered and no question shall be reconsidered more than once, nor shall any vote be reconsidered on a motion to adjourn or lay on the table of the previous question. Sarah Heller, uh, 8 Central Street. It was always my understanding that in order to make a motion to reconsider, the person making the motion had to have been on the uh, prevailing side, had to have voted in favor of the motion. I'd like clarification about that. Through you, Mr. Moderator. Um, town meeting time does absolutely say that. However, town meeting time, which is the book when I point to, to town meeting time, is the book that we use to, to regulate these proceedings absent your bylaw. Town meeting time does say that, but at the same time, town meeting time recognizes the difficulty of a moderator trying to figure out who voted for what. So it's really the call of the moderator. If he's going to allow it, I don't see anything in your bylaws that would prevent him from, from allowing this motion to go forward. So it's my understanding it's your call, Mr. Moderator, right? Barbara, did you vote for the proposal or against the proposal? I voted against. All I'm asking is this be referred to the annual town meeting, and I don't feel six months when people have shown tonight, and I'm amazed at how much people on these boards, the advisory board, the selectmen, and everybody are saying that our people are doing a good job, and it has shown that. And taking it to the town meeting, like we should, instead of trying to put it through in a special of something so important. The town meeting times that we use to, to uh, run this meeting says that they have to be on the winning side in order to reconsider that vote. So the motion is denied. Moving on to Article 21. To see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer or borrow a sum of money to the library book materials account to meet Mass General Law Chapter 78, Section 19B, um, Section 5605, CMR 404.01, I guess that's paragraph 5, to extend a reasonable portion of the library's total budget on the library materials or take any other action there too. Mr. Moderator? Yes, Ms. Lincoln. I move that the town raise and appropriate $719 to the library book materials account to meet Mass General Law Chapter 78, Section 19B, 5 and 605 CMR 4.05 to expend a reasonable portion of the library's 
total budget on library materials. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there a presentation? Yeah, it, it, we just have to do the seven hundred and ninety dollars to make sure we're not okay. out of out of step with the library commission. State requirement. It gets us to the state required budgetary level. Sorry, we need a certain level of library material funding in order to keep our um, the funds that we get from the state uh, by having a public library. And so this budgetary adjustment is required in order to ensure we get the appropriate state aid. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify a raising your card. And opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Article 22, to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer or borrow a sum of money to fund the human resources duties that are not covered under the current treasurer contract or take any action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator. Yes, Ms. Lincoln. I move that the town raise and appropriate $2,500 to fund human resources duties that are not covered under the current treasurer's contract. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Yes. Mike. Behind you. Well, folks, I guess we can say no to this now that we're getting the uh, uh, future town administrator to help out with human resources, so I urge you to vote no. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please signify with raising your card. And opposed? Uh, but, but I'm, 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 I'm going to go back. And those that are in favor, I want to take a count, please. Those that are in favor of the motion, please signify with raising your card. Counters? Uh, repeat the motion. Okay. Again, this is to raise to appropriate twenty five hundred dollars to fund you. human resource Close. to fund twenty five hundred dollars to fund human resource duties that are not covered under the current treasurer contract. Okay. So, all those in favor of the motion, please signify your raise, raising your card. Counters, please. Two. Two. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Fourteen. Fourteen. All right, those opposed, please signify by raising your cards. Motion passes 41 to 21. Thank you. Article 23. To see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer or borrow a sum of money for replacement of the police security system server or take any other action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator. Yes, Ms. Lincoln. I move that the town raise an appropriate $2,352.24 to replace the police department's security service system. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify raising your card. And opposed? Motion passes. Article 24, to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer or borrow a sum of money to fund the assistant town clerk account or take any other action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator. Yes. I move that the town raise an appropriate uh, $2,000 and 
$2,029 to fund the assistant town clerk account. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by raising your card. And opposed? Uh, motion passes. Article 25, to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer or borrow a sum of money to the Board of Health expense account or take any, any action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator. Yes, Mr. Uh -huh. I move that Snyder. the town raise an appropriate $1,159 to the Board of Health expense account. Okay. Motion has been made and seconded. This any discussion? Necessary. This is necessary to okay. cover for the health. Go health. ahead. Nece this expense is ne necessary coverage for the health agent. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please signify raising your card. And opposed? Motion passes. Article 26, to see if the town will vote to transfer a sum of money from the board health clerk account to the board of health expense account or take any other action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator. Yes, Mr. I Snyder. move that the town transfer $1,970 from the board of health clerk account to the board of health expense account. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Again, this supports Article 25. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the article, please signify by raising your card. And opposed? Motion passes. Article 27. To see if the town will vote to transfer a sum of money from the Water Department surplus account to the Water Department operating expense account or take any action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator. Yes, Mr. I move, Snyder. I move the town transfer $3,440 from the Water Department surplus account to the Water Department operating expense account. Motion has been made and seconded. Again, this is to cover new mandated expenses. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please signify by raising your card. And opposed? Motion passes. Article 28, to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer or borrow or sum of money to fund a shortfall in the highway clerk's wages or take any action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator. Yes, Mr. Snyder. I move that the town raise an appropriate $3,691 to fund the shortfall in the highway clerk's wages. Do we have a second? We, we have a second. Any discussion? Again, this was a miss at the end. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by raising your card. And opposed? Motion passes. Article 29, to see if the town will vote to amend Chapter 5, Financial Affairs, Section 7 of General Law, General Bylaws of the Town of Brookfield relating to the Capital Improvement Committee by striking out the number 5,000 and replacing it with the number 10,000 as shown in the bold below. Mr. Moderator. I'm yes, Ms. Crawford. I move that the town vote to amend Chapter 5, Financial Affairs, Section 7 of the General Bylaws of the Town of Brookfield as written in Article 29 of the Special Town Meeting Warrant. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by raising your card. And opposed? Motion passes. Article 30, to see if the see if the town will transfer a sum of money to the general stabilization account or take any action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator. Yes, Ms. Crabbe. I move that the town vote to raise and appropriate $120,000 to the general stabilization account. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Mr. Mr. Moderator. Mr. Regan. I move that we amend the amount in this motion from $120,000 to $70,000 with the intent of the new amount maintaining our levy headroom consistent in this fiscal year and past fiscal year with the objective of maintaining a tax rate consistent over years. What is the number again, please? The new number is $70,000, 70000 
So that's an, a motion to amend. Is there a second? Second. Motion to amend has been made and seconded. All those in favor? Uh, discussion? Anybody want to explain why? Uh, okay. Uh, this is a motion on to amend the amount from 120 to 70,000. All in favor, please. Can you explain more? Why, why is it, what is it? What is it? You want to answer that question? Yeah, I'd be happy to answer the question. The, the levy headroom is the number that we control that, um, that we use to try and make, it's like, the intention is, one of our objectives is to maintain a stable tax rate. The $120,000 we recommended was based on the floor approving the articles that we recommended and skipping over them. Um, the, the floor has made different decisions. It has approved articles we did not recommend, so that's additional spending. So in order to still land at that same levy headroom number, we need to reduce the amount of money being put into stabilization because some of the money we intended to put in stabilization is being used to fund the generator and the town administrator. So the intention of this motion is to maintain a stable levy headroom number year over year, which will lead to a more stable tax rate year over year, which we, which we believe is good for the town and based, okay, so do I need to explain more? Okay, is that good? Ms. Lincoln? When I made my comments on the um, hiring the town administrator, I had said that the money was going to be coming out of this, and nobody had questioned this out of 120000 And now uh, we're going, going against our promise that we made to the town, townspeople that we would put that amount of money into um, the stabilization account. So the way I feel now, um, what kind of faith does the town have in the Board of Selectmen if they're not going to put what they promised back to the voters of the community? Mr. O'Connell. Question. Um, uh, how much is in stabilization before we vote on this motion? Somebody answer that? Microphone, uh, punk? Um, I don't have an exact figure with me. Uh, it's in the neighborhood of $476,000. And uh, within our new financial policies, what would, as I recall, it's 5% of the operating budget, so that would be Roughly $450,000 is the target goal for stabilization? I think we had set in our new financial policies a goal of between 5 and 8%. Okay, 5 to 8%. Um, not, not a strict 5. Okay, so if we're now going to be transferring 37000 70. 70000 we're going to have Five hundred and forty-six thousand dollars in stabilization. Which is yeah, give or take, we gain um, quarterly interest from the trust company. Okay. So we're we're in pretty good shape in stabilization, even with this lower amount. We don't we don't have to transfer one hundred twenty thousand dollars or some other number simply because we promised it before. The picture has changed, right? That we're, we're in good shape for stabilization going forward particularly if we vote this amount. We're in, we are in decent shape for stabilization. The goal was to put back the money that we had borrowed. Um, whether the town, um, or I should say, whether the Board of Selectmen and the Advisory Board decide to put the remainder of the money back into the general stabilization fund, or whether they decide at the annual town meeting to set up a capital purchases stabilization fund, mm -hmm. which is what a lot of towns decide to do when they reach their end goal of you know, the highest percent possible in their financial plan of, I believe we said ours, five to 8%. So if they reach the 8% in general stabilization, they'll open up a secondary stabilization set for capital purchases. 
and set an end goal for that in the somewhere in the neighborhood of five to eight percent. So that way, if there is a year that you don't have substantial free cash, or if you want to set in your capital plan that so much is spent out of free cash every year and so much is spent out of capital stabilization to fund the large scale capital purchases that we want. So we should be putting money away. Very good. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right, hang on, Paul. So I have a few concerns about this. Uh, funding anything through raising and appropriating and stabilization is very unusual for us to do that. In fact, generally what we do is we take our free cash at the end of uh, every annual town meeting or special town meeting, and we apply that to our stabilization fund. Considering the fact that we've spent a lot of money tonight on raising and appropriating to fund the articles that we have before us tonight, and that we are in good shape with stabilization and we are building that up in next fiscal year we anticipate having a good sum of free cash to use for our future capital purchases i think it makes sense for us to not raise and appropriate to put any money into stabilization we've raised and appropriated a lot of money tonight let's sit on what we have and when free cash comes let's start resupplying our stabilization fund so i'm going to uh, move that we pass over this article. Okay. That proposed, that motion has to be made on a main motion. This is an amendment. Any further discussion? So this is a vote to accept the amendment amount of 70,000. All those in favor, please signify raising your card. And opposed, the motion passes. So now we're back to the article, the original motion with the 70,000. Move the question. All right, that's a two-thirds vote. Uh, counters? All those in favor of moving the motion, please signify raising your card. And those opposed? Motion passes. No. So now we have to vote on that, that uh, motion, Article 30. All those in favor of approving the article, amended article, please signify raising your card. And opposed? Motion passes. Now I'll make a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn has been made and seconded. All those in favor, please raise your card. And opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Yeah.